This is the talk show that takes a no-holds-barred approach to politics, where truth and integrity are the standard and the Constitution honored. From Renaissance Studios, this is Champion News Talk Radio. to another great edition of Champion News Talk Radio, brought to you by championnews.net, your choice for the conservative voice. This is Carol Parisi. Today, our founder, Jack Roser, and myself have a very special guest with us, House Republican Leader Tom Cross. Good morning, Jack. How are you today? Well, I'm fine, but the important guy is sitting over on that corner of the table, and it's Tom Cross, who's the head of the Republican organization in the House, the Republican House, down in Springfield. Uh, he's the guy that's been putting up with the outrageous, uh, highly funded management of Madigan, who's uh, been uh, the curse of the legislature for some 42 years. Uh, Tommy's had a lot more money than you to work with, and uh, it's uh, been a rough job for you uh, bringing together as much uh, good as you could get out of uh, being in the minor minority in recent years. And uh, that's one reason that uh, uh, I think I'm the oldest Tea Party guy in the state. And uh, a lot of uh, good re Republican organizations are strongly behind Tom. And uh, we've been working uh, together uh, to find uh, good candidates. That, are, that Our big goal here is to uh, change the House and the Senate and get uh, six more votes in each. Uh, our, our motto is six plus six minus one. And the minus one is the Tarrant uh, Madigan, who's made this. He owns this mess. So uh, yeah, that's your big job. Uh, and uh, uh, I think we're making good headway finding the right candidates to support with you. We've got a lot of good people down there. We have, great, we have great candidates. We have a good base. As you said, we need, we, we need six, and the Senate needs six. What I don't think people know is we were down 12 seats last cycle. We picked up six, and we're moving the ball in the right direction. I think folks in the state are figuring out that uh, the problem is Michael Madigan. Yes, that's the guy. You know, it just infuriates me that uh, the media point to Quinn, the governor, all the time, when uh, I really believe the media has been covering for for Madigan. Uh, uh, he's he's at the root of this entire cabal. He loves national elections because nobody pays attention to state elections. Uh, so, so, Tom, how long has he been in office now? Forty-two years. <laughs> We have $9 billion in unpaid bills. We have a pension system that's underfunded to the tune of anywhere from 130 to $200 billion. We have the highest unemployment in the Midwest. Would uh, you say that last one about the pension, teacher pensions, it, is how much in the hole? Well, between all five systems, it's between 150 to $200 billion that's in billion the hole. Billion would a B. With a B. Is that even going to be able to be paid back? <clears throat> It's I mean, going to be very, very difficult, but, I, but we need to remind voters and, and, and the friends on this show that the Democrats have run this state for the last 10 years. Speaker Madigan, Speak President Cullerton, President Emil Jones before that, Rod Blagojevich, Governor Quinn, they spent money we didn't have. They didn't put money into the pension system. They ruined the business climate. When you have the highest unemployment rate in the Midwest, that doesn't bode well for, for the direction of the state and the future of the state. So to Jack's point, it's a complete mess. There's one guy that's got his fingerprints on every single mess, and that's Mike Madigan. And the reality is the only way you change the direction of Illinois is to replace the Democrats with Republicans. You know, in, in talking to people around the state and uh, on our radio program, I've often held up these two fingers and said uh, there's two things that Illinois has known. By. Uh, worldwide, they've known for years, and certainly this year, it is the most crooked state in the Union. Well, look what you've got. Uh, Michael Madigan, the most powerful uh, politician in Illinois, uh, the kingmaker, and who's got his back? Lisa Madigan, our attorney general. You know, Chicago was recently uh, 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 given the status of the most corrupt city in the nation. And Lisa Madigan has not uh, prosecuted one case of corruption in her entire stint as our attorney general. Terrible reputation, both in Chicago and st statewide. Crooked politics run by the Democrats. The other thing is, we're the most broke state. Our credit rating is the worst of them all. 
It's worse than even California. Not quite as wide, but it's deeper. And that curse has been given us by uh, Madigan, who's dominated uh, the legislature for a great many years. Well, Jack, to your point, and Carol, to your point about the pensions, can we fix it? We were called to Springfield to do a special session by Governor Quinn to deal just with pensions, mm -hmm. just with pensions, which we mm -hmm. have to fix. Uh, the day before we were scheduled to take a vote, we found out through looking through the state websites that the speaker received $100,000 from SCIU, one of the service employee unions, $100,000. Three or four days after we were supposed to be down there, or that we were down there, he received another $100,000. Believe it or not, we had no vote on pension reform whatsoever. We didn't fix it. Coincidence? Perhaps. <laughs> but you can be the judge on whether or not that's coincidence. He's buying it with money. Uh, this, uh, this thing uh, that we're talking about, the teacher pensions, uh, the, uh, the union, the, uh, uh, the uh, IEA division of the NEA, which Forbes called the National Extortion Association, the IEA is at the bottom of a lot of this trouble because they've been dedicated to turning the place socialist and high spending for a long, long time. And, uh, but they take uh, from the teachers, uh, the last year we had the full record is for 2010, and they took $132 million, with a big M, $132 million from the teachers uh, in dues only. Now there's, uh, it works out to about $1,000 a teacher on average. And uh, the Beck decision says that 80% of that should be returned to the teachers. Instead, they have spent this thing, I think we've found 15 different organizations sponsored by the IEA were pouring money into the Democrats uh, in elections. Uh, but uh, that whole, uh, with 80%, it amounts to about $100 million a year, goes into all kinds of publicity and things that's nothing but uh, a p political uh, graft that's uh, going on, and Madigan runs that thing. It's hard to deal to beat that much money flowing into so many. Uh, take, for instance, uh, uh, we've got a, a, the uh, race up in the 52nd with uh, McSweeney, and uh, Madigan put over $200,000 in that in the beginning. Recently, he's put in another 200000 I think that one of the points that's, that's important for not only races around here but around the state is Madigan's received over a million dollars just in the last three months alone from the unions and I think that and Jack you made a good point it's not I don't have a problem with individual teachers at all I think they go in and work and you know they do what they're asked to do it's the heads of these organizations oh, yeah. that cut these deals with Mike Madigan remember a few years ago and just recently we found out that he had passed a bill that allowed the head of the Illinois Federation of Teachers to go and substitute teach for one day. Mm -hmm. Now he'd been hired by the IFT, worked for the IFT. Mm -hmm. He was able to substitute teach for one day and allowed him to get a teacher retirement, be part of the teacher retirement system and collect under that. That is outrageous. It's ludicrous. And it's not only unfair and wrong for the taxpayers, it's wrong for the rank and file teachers. Yes. But it's your right, Jack, it's the head of these organizations that are so problematic. Well, one of the guys in uh, um, uh, Bill Zettler's book, uh, uh, Illinois Pension Scam, uh, Kenneth Drum, he receives 159000 in pension. He has received already $2 million in pension payments. And guess what? He's never been a state employee. He's a union boss. And it goes on and on with just him <laughs> and others. They, we had a, another problem in the city where folks were uh, using <clears throat> legislation passed by the Democrats, and initiated by the Democrats. They would start out working for the city. They would then leave the city for a while, take a leave of absence, go over and work for the, the late, one of the labor unions. They would then at the end, um, when they finally left the labor union, they would go back and work for the city for a day or two. This would enable them to get two pensions, one for the city, one for the labor union. Then they would also base their city union, city pension on the salary they were getting at the, at the, at the labor organ for the labor union. This is all was done by the, the, for the most part, the upper echelon of the unions, not necessarily the rank and file, but this gets to be a math question. People put in maybe 150. You get some interest on that money. This, the, your employer matches, and you get it back within several years. The math doesn't work. You yeah, know what's no. sad is that the hardworking middle-income taxpayer is going to be paying for all of this. <clears throat> Property taxes keep going up, 
And if the, if the taxpayer knew how this system, how some of these folks are bilking this system, I think they would be outraged. Well, again, we go back to the speaker. The speaker wants to solve the pension problem by shifting the problem to the local school districts. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean, Carol? And Jack knows this. This means, and it could be a 20% increase, it could be 15, it could be 30. That gets transferred to the property taxpayer. Now, does it fix the pension system? He just shifts it to the local property taxpayer, which is wrong. And if they do that, it's going to seriously affect seniors that are on fixed incomes. You're going to see foreclosures across Illinois just skyrocket. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people get mad at the assessor. Oh, we don't have much time here, but it's worth going into uh, what that money would do uh, to bankrupting uh, all of the, uh, the districts throughout the state, not only school district, but uh, has to do with everybody's real estate tax. I completely agree with you.